Hi, I'm Ian Ritz. I'm the owner of Chromag Bikes, and we're going to show you a little bit about our process of making a frame from conception to machining, welding, painting, assembly, and delivery to the final customer at the end. So the primer was a, uh, one of the most drastic changes we've made in the last 10 years. And in a way, we wanted to try and test some limits. We wanted to see how a bike would feel if it was a lot longer, a lot slacker, a lot lower, uh, a lot more upright for the rider. And we wanted to try a very short chainstay length. So the idea was make the front end longer, make the rear end shorter, uh, get your stance as low as possible. And we thought actually we'd be pulling back on a lot of those, a lot of those measurements. But in the end, uh, the bike was exactly, well, it was, it was very much the way we wanted it. And, and it, um, it even set, uh, uh, charted a course for going longer uh, and slacker in the future. Okay, so we're at the design phase here. And uh, most productions, we do a full-size drawing. What we start with in a lot of cases is the peripheral components. So we would start with a wheel set, for example. Bottom bracket is a pretty central part on the bike. So that's sort of the midpoint between the wheels. How long is the fork gonna be? That's gonna determine where the head tube is. And then we kind of connect the dots and make it all fit together as ergonomically as possible. Plus tire is one of those things that came along and we're like, mm, what is this? You know, in the case of the primer, here's a 29er. As long as we can increase the tire clearance, you can try a different wheel set. So I'm not saying that plus tires are the way to go or that they're everything, but they do have benefits. And so here's a way that we can actually increase the, uh, the purpose of a model simply by making an adjustment that doesn't have any negative effects. Uh, the goal making the primer was to have short chain stays. We wanted to create a lot of tire clearance. And in order to do that, we had to have a wide bottom bracket to weld to. So if you look at the BB92 bottom bracket and a 73 mil classic threaded bottom bracket, you can see there's a lot more room to weld your chain stays to. And that's what accommodates the tire clearance that we get out of uh, the primer which uh, comfortably fits up to a 27.5 by 2.8 width up to possibly a 3.0 tire. And there are many chain reactions that happen when you have this part requires this much clearance, requires this part to move here and so forth. So the design process can often go through circular process of we design to fit with this, it doesn't work with that, we come back to the beginning again and start over again. It's a one-to-one -one drawing and uh, and that means basically it's the exact size that the bike is going to be when it when it's produced and it's very convenient for the welder because if he creates a chainstay sub-assembly he can actually lay it right out on the drawing here and make sure everything is correct. So what we're looking at here is one of our classic 2D drawings. This is done in a very simple 2D software and actually it's quite adequate for making a, uh, a hardtail because when the welder approaches a hardtail he basically looks at it in two dimensions. Two-dimensional has actually been really convenient for us just in terms of uh, being a quick process and um, and so this is what a frame looks like. You've got your your profile drawing of uh, the front and rear triangle and then we also do a layout for the seat stays and a layout for the chain stays. And you can see here specifically with the chain stays, there's a lot of crucial uh, uh, layout issues with uh, things like chain ring compatibilities, where the cranks are gonna be, where the tire's gonna be, and all this stuff is constrained by the components that you're gonna use. Uh, so Ben's doing a three-dimensional drawing, and um, although this is probably more than a lot of our local frame builder will use, uh, it gives us the ability to, um, to tweak the design with equations so we can punch in uh, formulatic information and the design will change 
uh, without us having to redraw the frame every time. So making the primer was a process where we, we designed the bike, made an initial prototype, rode it for about six months, and then we produced a very small production batch of half a dozen frames that were sold in the, inside the local community to either uh, close customers or team riders or even staff, and then we would go to production the following spring. We're not revolutionizing designs, like we've been making a variation of the same design for 15 years now. And I really believe in that process. I believe that you want to make an evolved design rather than uh, making revolutionary changes. And as we evolve the design, we're really just perfecting it bit by bit, making it, making it a little more streamlined and a little more reliable. To be honest, prototyping at this point it rarely turns up any major red flags. Okay, so a number of our components like dropouts, yokels, cable guides, disc brake tabs are all machined and that's actually just next door in the same building here. So let's go have a look. So this is uh, Peter here. Peter's a machinist and he's making bottom brackets today on the lathe. So today we're making threaded bottom brackets that look like this. So you can have a look in the machine here. Making bottom brackets is pretty simple. We basically got a raw steel tube. We cut it to length and then it goes in the chuck here and it gets turned. We do an internal bore and then this particular one we thread it as well. Year after year, what we've been doing is designing our own tubes, opening molds with tubing manufacturers and making our own tubes. And now, today, every frame we make, every tube on every frame we make is entirely our own design, our own model, manufactured exclusively for us. Okay, so I got my trusty uh, bill of materials here. And uh, since this is just one frame I'm picking, I got one small box. And um, we've got 16 different uh, material items for this frame. So I'll just go through and pick them one by one. So starting with, uh, I'm gonna use a 105 mil head tube. Seat stays are straight and the welder bends these per size. When you, uh, when you look at a, uh, a frame, the seat stay angle changes per size, so that depends, that, that changes how the stay is gonna be bent. So each stay has to be bent per size of frame. Water bottle bosses, this is the one thing we don't make. Water bottle bosses, we buy these from the frame supply. That's our little seat tube oval. Gets brazed on to the seat tube where the uh, stealth port comes out. So here it is, one frame. We got our front triangle, rear triangle, all of our welded joints, dropouts, head tube, bottom bracket, cable guides, water bottle bosses, little reinforcement for the stealth port. So in the case of the primer and a lot of the frames we make in Canada, it has a production made counterpart called the root down. Root down is essentially the same frame, but instead of us making every part one by one here in Canada, uh, we can produce all the parts at the same time in one location in Taiwan. The customer has the option to have a, have a name behind their bike and know that this is a storied welder in the, the, the mountain biking community in Canada, making each frame by hand, every cut, every weld. My name's Mike Truelove. We're in Squamish, BC, and I make frames for Chromag bikes. Uh, to date, I've made uh, almost a thousand frames for them and do a lot of the primer and samurai models. Chromag brings me the design and they will print me up full-size drawings, which I can get all the relevant 
measurements from. And then I'll transfer those measurements to my jig. Then I'll cut the tubes so they fit on the jig, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. And when they're all perfectly mitered and fitted together, I can tack them th together and then weld all the joints. We aspire to offer both options to the customer. They can have a, a uh, very customized, very specialty, very small production bike, or they can have something that is based on exactly the same design and experience, but with the efficiency of, uh, of a factory production. Yo. Thanks, Pete. So there it is, one finished primer, ready to go. So thanks a lot for visiting us and seeing how we make a bike. And that's the end of our video. If you want to uh, see more, click here. And if you want to subscribe, click here. Walk off the bike. Where am I going? <laughs>